Now I will read what is on the chart on this page. Energy is conceived in inertia, stored in mass, and recorded in plane. And this shows the from the nebulous to the ovoid to the oblateness to the sphere and back from the oblateness to the ovoid to the nebulous again. At the bottom it says mass is generated into the appearance of form by the attraction of gravitation and is radiated into the disappearance of form by the repulsion of radiation. Now back to the reading. The constant of dimensions of the electric poles cannot change with changing dimensions, for they mark the volume or expansion dimensions of the wave. Therefore, as the axis of the cones contract, the altitudes of the contracting cones are transferred to the poles of rotation of forming masses, which, added together, equal the constant of the whole. Observe, then, that energy in concept in inertia is expressed by magnetic base of cone meeting magnetic base, an apex of cone meeting apex of the south inertial plane of the cubes of motion. Observe also that energy in motion is expressed by the disappearance of cones, by apex and base melding with apex and base at the ecliptic planes of the cubes of motion through the contraction of the electric poles. The entire garment of all effects of motion is run during this process of the contraction of the opposing electric poles to a point of disappearance in mass and the expansion of the magnetic basis from the inertial planes of non-motion to the ecliptic plane, planes of maximum motion and the consequent disappearance of cones in mass. During this process, the point of north, north draws the design of the wave in a spiral line from the centers to the corners of the cubes of motion. Through contraction of the electric poles, central fetal force is born in the inertial plane and is increased in force in whirling masses, which are contracting with the contraction of the poles of the opposing cones of motion as they near the apexes of, their, of those cones on their outward journey to mass and is decreased in force as they return to plane. Through contraction of the electric poles, centrifugal force is born in the inertial plane and is increased in force until that plane has gyrated unsteadily to its overtone position of maximum contraction at the point of north of the cubes of motion on its outward journey to mass and is decreased in force as it returns to plane. Although centrifugal force is preponderant on the outward journey to mass from 0 minus minus to 4 plus plus in the positive half of the wave, centrifugal force increases in excess of centrifugal force until the former overtakes and counterbalances the latter at the overtone of the wave. This is in conformity with the fact that negative discharge increases as positive charge increases until the former overtakes the latter and the power of disintegration exceeds that of integration, causing dissipation of accumulated energy. This is also in conformity with the fact that the force of radiation increases as the force of gravitation increases until the former overtakes the latter and dominates the wave. Conversely, Although centrifugal force is preponderant on the return journey to plane from 4 plus plus to 0 minus minus in the negative half of the wave, centrifugal force decreases in excess of centrifugal force until the latter overtakes the former at the harmonic of the wave. This is in conformity with the fact that negative discharge decreases as positive charge decreases until the latter overtakes the former and integration again exceeds disintegration, causing the wave to repeat itself. This is also in conformity with the fact that the force of radiation decreases as the force of gravitation decreases until the latter overtakes the former and supplies the impetus for overcoming inertia in the repetition of the expression of the same constant of energy in a new wave. This is the process of formation of mass 
its dissolution, and its repetition by means of the wave for every expression of energy. This is the general active process of production and reproduction, of creation, of any of the ideals of mind, and the radioactive process of their dissipation or dissolution into but the memory of those ideas. The effect of relation to plane has been a gradual contraction, and the building up of op opposing pressure walls of increasing potential in ever-shortening cones. Another effect in relation to plane has been to overcome its inertia and set it in motion. The force of motion toward plane is always toward south by way of west and is therefore centrifugal. The effect, of it is the effect in relation to volume of the cones has been a division into separately whirling masses. The effect in regard to the cones of energy has been their transference to mass, within which they continue their office of opposing and of alternating conquest on the journey, from plane to mass and back again to plane. When apex meets apex at the center of the magnetic bases within masses, then the outward journey is completed. At this point, sex meets sex in a bisexual union, at the true point of north where both revolution and rotation disappear. The force of motion away from plane is always toward north by the way of east and is therefore centrifugal. When apex meets apex at the center of the magnetic basis of south inertial planes, then is the return journey completed. The contraction of the generative cones ends at the electric poles and is the effect of centrifugal force. The expansion of the radiative cones ends at the ecliptic plane and is the effect of centrifugal force. The gradual contraction of the two opposing and intersecting cones into their disappearance in one plane causes all substance forced in the direction of the two vortices to whirl in the ever-shortening spiral orbits and ever-increasing pressures of the electric stream. The same cause forces all substance expelled from the contracted north to whirl in the ever-lengthening spiral orbits and lessening pressures of the magnetic stream. The contracting electric centrifugal stream is the condition of motion necessary to produce that effect of motion which we call the attraction of gravitation. The expanding magnetic centrifugal stream is the condition of motion necessary to produce that effect of motion which we call the repulsion of radiation. The electric stream and the magnetic stream are one. They are but traveling in different directions. The electric stream is traveling towards the apex of a cone in the ever-contracting direction of the outward journey to mass, and the magnetic stream is traveling toward the base of a cone in the ever-expanding direction of the return journey to plane. Each stream is forever passing and following the other as the degeneration or regeneration of it. The electric stream of contraction is a plus force which ends in mass. The magnetic stream of expansion is the minus force which ends in plane. Both forces intensify toward north and build unstable and opposing tonal pressure walls which become stable and reproductive by their union at the point of north. Both forces meet in reproductive union in equal high intensities in the double tone at the bisexual plane of north. There remains but one more effect of which to make careful note in order to completely visualize the mechanics of motion of both the outward journey from plane to mass and the return journey to plane. As the apexes of the opposing cones of energy contract and their contours expand, the apices of the cones of energy blend gradually away from the inertial junctions to the corners of the cubes of motion. Thus spiral waves are formed and all spiral motion is born.